we were not even supposed to be Nigerians in mm. the first place. Wow. <laughs> we mm. were the Royal Niger Company. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. So we're basically a company for the British to take resources and blah, 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 and go for Britain. Right. Do you understand? Yeah. And then somewhere along the line, the company decided to buy the whole uh, uh, place mm. and amalgamate it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So at the end of the day, the people that sell the place and the people that buy, to them are the winners. Mm. The rest of the people are what? Right. Collateral, Collateral damage. damage. Whatever Bonaboy is saying here is not a new thing. Everything he said here is the fact and the truth, and this is as old as this country. What he just did is to re-echo it, to retreat it into the ears and the mind of the Gen Z generation whose history has been cut off from them. People who do not know the history of this country, people who do not know how Nigeria was colonized, people who do not know the modus operandum of the British Empire why they were colonizing Nigeria. You might have heard that the Southern and the Northern Protectorate was amalgamated in 1914. The meaning of this amalgamation is that the North and the South were joined together by the British Empire to be called Nigeria. They did this on their own accord without consulting the people. The people did not come together to tell the British that we want to be together. The reason why the British Empire decided to amalgamate the North and the Southern Protectorate was for the purpose of ease of doing business, for the purpose of administrative convenience. During the colonial era where Africa was partitioned, Nigeria was given to British to colonize. When they came to Nigeria, they met a people of different tongues, they met a people of different belief, they met a people of different religion, they met a people of different culture. The purpose of administrative convenience so that they can be able to colonize the country easily without spending much money, they decided to bring the North and the South, amalgamated them together and gave the name Nigeria that we are currently bearing now. The name Nigeria was given to us by the British colonial rulers. Therefore, to echo what Bonabo is saying, Nigeria is a business entity of the British Empire. Nigeria is a dream of the British Empire. And we have been carrying on for this dream for a very long time. That dream has not yielded any positive result. That dream has not yielded any development. That dream has yielded nothing but bloodshed and killing. Millions of persons have been killed in this country because we are carrying on the dream of another person. That dream that was forced on us has yielded corruption, backwardness, underdevelopment, unemployment, tribalism, religious fight in this country. We call ourselves united in our diversity. We call ourselves one Nigeria. But when you look at it carefully, you will notice that we are not one. This country was never meant to be one. And the reason why we are not moving forward as a country is because we were not meant to be one. You cannot force people to be together in a harmony that they don't want to be together. Even in marriages, when people don't want to be together, they split and go their separate ways. This is what we call divorce. So what exactly is the problem and the reason why Nigeria has not decided to divorce. We are only united on papers, we are only united on televisions, we are only united when the politicians say so, but in the actual sense and meaning of it, we are never united. Everything that is happening in this country is all about disunity. When it comes to every facet of our human endeavor, we are not united. When it comes to the relation with one another, we are not united. There is constant strife between the north and the south, the east and the west. Tell me which region in this country that is at peace with each other. Just mention one. The South-South is at war with the South-East. The South-East is at war with the South-South. The South-West is at war with the South-East and they are also at war with the North. The North is at war with the South-East and they are also at war with the South-West. There is no region in this country that will tell you that we are at peace with one another. The British created this empire called Nigeria and they handed it over to the political class. They've left this country, but whatever happens in this country politically is at the dictate of our former colonial master. Look at the power sharing formula in this country. Everything is disjointed. There is nothing that shows that we are one Nigeria. For years, for decades, 
one section of this country they've been holding sway to power. The North, they've had combined 40 plus years holding sway to power in this country and they've done absolutely nothing with it. They've not fixed this country. They've not brought development in this country. When someone from the South holds sway to power, the North will fight against that person. Look at what they did to Gulak Ebele Jonathan. The reason why Gulak Ebele Jonathan was perceived as weak, as incompetent, as a failure was because he's from the South. Not only because he was from the South, they also viewed him as an Igbo man. I mentioned in one of my videos that Gulok Jonathan is from the Igbo speaking tribe in Bayesa and some persons were correcting me that Gulok Jonathan is from Ijo. Jonathan's name is Gulok Ebele Azikiwe Jonathan. The moment you are bearing an Igbo name, even if you are from Yoruba, they will see you as an Igbo man. You don't even need to be an Igbo name, just look fresh, just come from the south south, they will see you as an Igbo man. This is what we call Nigeria and this is in Nigeria we all say we are one, we are not united, we are carrying on another dream and this dream has become a burden on us, this dream has hampered and impeded on our development and growth. The Biafra war was an attempt to destroy that British dream. The Biafra war was an attempt to destroy that British business entity, that business empire they created in Nigeria. But no, it did not succeed. Some person said that the Nigerian army defeated the Biafran army. No, Nigerian army did not defeat the Biafran army. The war did not succeed. The war did not actualize its true purpose. The reason was because the British stood hand in hand with the Nigerian troops and they fought fearlessly against the Biafran troops. War was only won on the ground of starvation. Nigeria blocked supplies to the Biafran region and children were dying in their numbers because of hunger. That was the reason why Biafrans decided to surrender and hand it over back to the Nigerian government. And the Nigerian government was usually supported by the British government. The reason why they supported them is because they don't want the entity called Nigeria to be destroyed. If Biafra has succeeded to be actualized, I can tell you for a fact for free that this entity called Nigeria would have long be a history. Not only will Nigeria be a history, so many African countries would have been a history. There would have been so many countries that would have come out from different African countries. Those of you that are making jokes of the Biafran war, you are making jokes of your future. You are making jokes of your life. What exactly are you benefiting from this current day Nigeria? What exactly is the purpose of your existence in this Nigeria? What exactly has Nigeria given to you as a citizen? Do Nigeria take care of you? No, she only takes care of the few less privileged politicians. Whatever you are enjoying in this country, you are paying through your nose for it. Even though you are paying through your nose to get whatever you are getting in this country, you are not even getting the quality service that is needed for it. So tell me what exactly is it that you are benefiting from this entity called Nigeria? A country is not working. The only thing that is needed for this country is for us to go our separate ways and we need to achieve that in peace. There is no need to fight, there is no need to kill one another. But the political class in this country, they will not allow that to happen. Do you know the reason why they will not allow Nigeria to go her separate ways? It's because they are benefiting from it. These people, they are benefiting from the structure of criminality that is in this country. Whenever you hear one Nigeria, you will always hear it from the political class. They are united in their collective corruption. They are united in their collective looting. They are united in their collective association that has created a political class for themselves which has made them to alienate themselves from the people. They now see themselves as demigod of the people. If they don't agree in separation, if they don't agree in us going our separate ways, then they should give us true federalism. This current system of government we are practicing is not favoring this country and it's not going to favor this country even in the next hundred years. This country will keep on moving in a circle. We need true federalism. Every region should be allowed to govern themselves. Every region should be allowed to control their own resources. This will breed healthy competition. This will breed healthy rivalry. Every region will compete with one another in order to develop at a faster pace. There will be a lot of innovation and new discovery. Regions will decide to discover things that will bring in money. There will be no need for the North to destroy beverages whereas they are benefiting from the revenue collection of beverages from the South. This is simply hypocrisy. 
through federalism with decentralized power, there is no reason why the president will be the one to dictate what happened in every part of this country. Yes, and I say it without mincing word. Most of you are saying, hold your governor, hold your governor. You cannot hold your governor when the president is in charge of every part of this country. The people that are saying hold your governor, they are saying that out of ignorance or maybe because they are being economical with the truth. Where exactly do you want to hold the governors responsible? Do you want to hold the governors in terms of insecurity? The insecurity in the land is not caused by the governors. This is the sole responsibility of the federal government. The federal government is in charge of providing security for the country. They are in charge of all the security agencies in the world. So how then are you going to hold the governors responsible for this? But if power is devalued, if power is decentralized and is created into regions, the governors in those regions will be held responsible if anything goes south in their states or in the region. The people there will know where to channel their anger. The high cost of living and food price in the market is as a result of interest rate, inflation and the first subsidy that was removed. Come on, the governors did not do any of this thing. The person responsible for this is Bola Metinibu, the president. Bola Metinibu created a parallel market which devalued the Naira. Bola Metinibu removed petrol subsidy. Bola Metinibu increased the interest rate. And I've explained this in, in so many of my videos that these things are responsible for the high cost of living and the price of commodity in the market. The governors are not responsible for this. Do you think Nigeria cannot attend true federalism? We can attend true federalism, but the reason why we are not going towards the way of true federalism, the reason why we keep going around the circle, repeating the same mistake over and over again, it's because we are carrying another man's dream. We are carrying another man's business empire. We are running another man's business and we have to run that business in the person's own terms and condition. Simply the fact until we destroy this business entity called Nigeria, until we come to the realization that this dream we are carrying does not belong to us. We are living another man's dream. We are living another man's fake dream and create our own reality and create our own dream. This country will not go forward anytime soon, even in the next hundred years. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.